Hello, I'm Tyler Andrews here with PoE Texas. Are you ready to get into automation and you've worried you have to get deep into coding to do it? In this short tutorial, I'll show you how to wire up and program your own low voltage lighting controller with stuff you can buy on Amazon. And most importantly, with absolutely no coding experience required. Let's get started. Thanks for joining me today. I've been doing automation and controls for 20 years. I've built systems as complex as giant GE gas turbine compressors or 2,000 horsepower indoor skydiving wind tunnels to projects as simple as a home automation system in my own house. This training will take you from an idea through a design, something you could change to fit your own needs, wiring and installation, and finally configuration and programming. You'll walk away with a practical understanding of the principles of automation, as well as some tools to try some projects on your own. On that point, today our automation project will be for a low voltage lighting system. I specifically chose low voltage lighting because it's intrinsically safe. You don't have to know all of the safety procedures for how to wire 120 or 220 volt AC power. You can install and wire this system into your own home or office without touching the 120 volt AC system. Everything we're doing today is touch safe. So no worries if you do it wrong or don't wire perfectly the first time. Just have fun and explore the world of automation. For today's project, I'm starting with our core controller, the AF Relay 8. This device accepts wired power and data from a power over ethernet cable, which means you can simply connect it to a PoE switch or injector to get it to come on. More on that later. It also has eight dry contact inputs. What's an input? That's where a controller accepts signals from things like light switches or sensors. What's a dry contact? I won't cover the specifics of the electronics. I'll just say, that dry contact inputs take an on-off signal from something like a light switch or a window magnetic sensor. But there's no electricity flowing through the wires. A dry contact simply checks whether electricity could pass through the light switch or the sensor. So again, touch safe. You can find all kinds of sensors that work with dry contact. I've done window sensors, fingerprint scanners, current monitoring switches, remote buttons, and regular old light switches. You might be shocked, or would it be not shocked, at what you can do with a dry contact input. We're gonna have some fun with ours today. The AF Relay 8 also has eight single pole relays. A relay is the most basic automation element of control. Imagine a, a small light switch that can be operated by a little genie that lives in the controller. Whenever you want, he'll flip the switch. I won't go into the different types of relays and contactors out there because there's a lot and they all do some very specific things. What I will cover here is what's the difference between normally open and normally closed because you'll see them marked on the relays with an NC for normally closed and NO for normally open. Basically, you use those to decide whether you want the little light switch on all of the time, unless you specifically want to turn it off, which is normally closed. Or do you want the little light switch off all the time, unless you want to turn it on, which is normally open. Practically speaking, normally closed is most often used for emergency situations, like you want something to fail to the on state, like a door lock keeping you from sticking your hand into a machine. In our case, and in most applications, we use the normally open side because, frankly, we think in terms of turning a light on. Now that we know what we are using to manage our automation, let's talk about the project we're doing today. First, like I mentioned, I want everything to be low voltage. That means I picked all of our fixtures and devices to be 24 volt DC or dry contact. I want to create a lighting demonstration for you to see how automation could look different from just having light switches in your house. So I picked four lighting outputs. Two lights in a wall sconce, which we can control separately if we wanted. 
one under cabinet accent light. I'm putting it around the lip of our controller box. One inner cabinet light for where we installed the AF Relay 8 controller and the power supply. I also picked two real inputs and two virtual inputs, which I'll explain when we get to the programming. For the real inputs, we have one on-off light switch, which is a maintain switch. Maintain means I turn it on and it stays on until I turn it off. We also have one momentary window sensor. Momentary means that the sensor only turns on when it is close to the magnet counterpart of the switch, or if it was a button, it's only on while the button is pressed. To help make the project easier, I've created a bill of materials to show you everything I used, including our parts and everything else I bought on Amazon. Take a moment to go order everything you need. Don't worry, I can wait. It'll be there in just a second. Let's look at how we're going to wire this all up. I decided to use wiring terminal strips with a bus bar for the power and common terminals. A terminal strip is simply a piece of hardware that makes it easier to connect your wires. A bus bar is just a little piece that connects the power to multiple terminals on a terminal strip. I just did this to make it easier to show the wiring. You can find the wiring drawing attached to this tutorial as a download. Make sure you review them carefully. As I go through the installation, follow along as I show you some of the methods I use for wiring connectors, including crimp on connectors and ferrules. Before we get there though, we'll need one more thing for the programming phase. You can call it a controls narrative or a logic sequence. Whatever you call it, you need something telling you what you want the system to do so you can program it. In this case, I organized it by input. You can see here at the bottom the virtual inputs I mentioned. A key advantage to digital automation are virtual inputs like schedulers. In this case, I can set a scheduler to turn on and off relays at set times of the day and week. You'll see me program these later. So, with the design and your parts in hand, Let's do a 30 second build montage. If you'd like to see the whole build in detail, click on the link in the description. In the meantime, let's jump into the testing and programming so you can see how it all works together. Let's first make sure the AF Relay 8 is connected to PoE Power. And let's pull up again the page showing what we want the program to do. We want to have the input 1, or light switch, turn on the sconce lights, relays 1 and 2, and turn off the under counter strip lights, relay 4, when the signal shows low, or what we might call on. Then flip the state when it's off. The magnetic sensor, input 2, controls the cabinet light, relay 3, so it's on when the cover is off, and the light turns off when the cover is replaced. Finally, we want to automatically turn off the lights after 7 p.m., whether they're on or not, and turn the li under cabinet lights off after 9 a.m. in case they've been on all night. Is this a perfect program? Not really, but it's a starting point to show you how each of the functions work. So let's get started by heading to the online manual. I'm showing here that all the steps and critical information you need for setting up your AF Relay 8 or in our technical support manual, which you can find by simply scanning the QR code on the front of the device. The first time configuring the AF Relay 8, it comes with a static IP address. It's easiest to connect to the device through the local Wi-Fi signal it creates, then set it up to work properly on your network. You can see how to find the default Wi-Fi password and IP address in our online manual. I'm just gonna copy that and then connect to the Wi-Fi signal on the device. 
All right, we'll open a browser to the default IP address. The default password is admin. Let's start by changing that so you don't have an unsecure device. I'm adding a long password for a demo here, which I do not really use. All right, we'll log back in now. Now we'll check our settings and adjust the device so it will dynamically get an IP address called DHCP. To confirm we're working on the right relay, and just for fun, I'm going to toggle on and off a relay. Now, let's test out our inputs. Looking good so far. So, now let's enable the inputs to control the relay outputs. In this case, the maintained light switch input will be configured as self-lock. When it sees the signal go low, then we're going to set relay 1 and relay 2 to turn on and relay 4, the under cabinet light, off. Then, when the input is off, we'll flip the state. Don't worry about adjusting the debounce. The default settings will work for most applications will do. Now when the cabinet cover gets set in place, it acts like a maintained switch. So we'll configure it as self-lock as well. Then we only want to control relay three. So I'll add it to the controls and remove relay two from this configuration by clicking on the little green R2. Once we're done with that, we'll save and test. That seems to work nicely. Now let's wrap it up by setting the scheduled activities. We'll enable the first scheduled task for Relay 4 to toggle on during the week starting today. Then we'll have it turn off again these days of the week. Let's set the time for it to come on and the time for it to go off. We'll configure a third task to turn Relay 1 off in the morning at 9 a.m. and set Relay 2 to do the same thing. Don't forget to scroll to the bottom and save your changes. Always save changes. Finally, as a best practice, once I have everything the way I'd like it, I'm going to download the config file for what I've done, then log out. Now, let's start playing with it. I hope you've enjoyed this project and seeing how you can use the AF Relay 8 to do some simple automation projects. I hope you get out there and create your own projects. Ask us questions in the comments or email us at success at peeweetexas.com. Tell us what you end up doing with your project. And if you're ready to take it to the next level in terms of controls with a touchscreen controller, remote access, and integrating it with a larger network, check out our tutorials on integrating the AF Relay 8 into our Denton Digital Building Intelligence server. Enjoy automating, and we'll see you next time.